I know that for some people who have heard your testimony, that's going to be an encouragement to strengthen them to win souls and, and you know, thanking God that they're not uh, going to a place you went. Um, hell. You went to hell. And then uh, for others, they've never heard it. And it's going to be there for the first time, and it's going to shock them. Uh, Bill, I'm, I want you to get right into your testimony uh, on 23 Minutes in Hell. All right. Well, thank you, Pastor Jason, for having me. It's always an honor to be with you. And uh, But anyway, I, I've been a real estate broker for my career. Uh, but on November 23rd, 1998, I had an experience that changed my life. And it doesn't matter if you believe my experience. What matters is that you check out what the Bible has to say about hell so you can avoid it just the same. Uh, this was not a near-death experience that I had. This was an out-of-body experience that's classified as a vision in the Bible. In 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul, when he was caught up into heaven in a vision, he said whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. Well, the Lord showed me that I left my body. So in a vision, you can actually travel like Paul and John actually traveled to heaven in their spirit bodies. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 44 talks about a natural body Bill, and a spirit body. You, you, that's heavy what you're saying because that happened to me. When really? I, yes. And by the way, I I'm going to ask people to send their questions because the good news is next week you're going to be back because there's no way we're yeah. going to finish this in a week. No. So you'll be back next week to answer questions from Instagram, yes. YouTube, email. Make sure you send your questions in, guys. Send the questions because this yeah. is very important. But that happened to me when that story, it's in the book, with the story where my sister was dying in the hospital and I'm okay. driving on the Whittier Boulevard to the hospital. The next thing you know, I'm, I'm in the hospital. My body's in the car, but I'm mm -hmm. in the hospital and looking at those four demons around my mm -hmm. sister's bed and the demon on top of her cutting her with a medical mask on. Yeah. Wow. And the angel that came and snatched that thing out. And she and we by the time I got to the hospital, the surgery was over. She was he, she was on recovery and it was a miracle, but it was in the spirit. Wow. So I know I know exactly what you're talking about. Right. Okay. So your body wow. was still there. Right. So, I, I, you know, you can travel, like I said, in your spirit body. Ooh. And, you know, Ezekiel chapter eight, he was traveled from Babylon to Jerusalem in his spirit body. And he was told to eat. He experienced the sweetness of the food in his stomach. He wept. He conversed. My point is, in your spirit body, you can experience the same things that you would in your physical body. Mm. And it's just as real. And Job 7, 14 says, you scare me with dreams and terrify me through visions. Jesus. I, Isaiah 21, 2, he was given a grievous vision. And in Job 4, 14, Eliphaz was given a vision that caused his bones to shake. So you can have a grievous, terrifying, bone-shaking vision. Now, I had never had a vision before. I would never gone to dark movies. I never drank. I never taken drugs. This was not a result of any of that. Just God chose to show me hell in a vision. And uh, we went to a prayer meeting that Sunday night, like we did every Sunday night. Came home like any other normal night. I was a Christian for 28 years at that point. Uh, went to bed. I got up at three o'clock in the morning just to get a glass of water. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body. I saw my body fall to the floor. And I started falling down this tunnel, this long tunnel. And I was getting hotter and hotter. And I landed on an actual stone floor in a prison cell in hell. Rough hewn stone walls, bars, filthy, stinking prison, but like a dungeon. Isaiah 24, 22 mentions prison cells. Proverbs 7, 27 mentions going down to hell to the chambers of death. The word chambers means inner rooms. Job 17, 16, they shall go down to the bars of the pit. Many more verses I could give you. But the point was, that's where I first found myself. And the first thing I noticed was the intense heat. It was like a blast furnace. And I wondered, how could I be alive in this heat? Wow. And my reaction was I wanted to get up and run out of this prison cell. But I had no physical strength in my body, completely void of any physical strength. But Isaiah 14, 9 and 10 says, hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. They will say, art thou become weak as we? Psalms 88, 4 says, I am counted with them that go down into the pit. I am as a man that has no strength. So if you ever had the flu and you felt weak, it's a thousand times worse than hell. Any movement takes tremendous effort. But Acts 17, 28 says, in him, we live and move and have our being. Mm. So movement comes from God. It's not automatic. Well, I looked up and I saw these two demons in the cell. Uh, they were reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all, all over the one's body, a uh, huge jaw, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long. And these particular two are about 12 or 13 feet tall. And that's not an exaggeration. There's scripture that indicates that. Genesis 6, 4, Deuteronomy 3, 11, and some others. But the point was that they started, uh, they had an extreme hatred for God. 
They were blaspheming and cursing God. But we know blasphemy comes from the demonic realm. Mm. Revelation 13, 6, James 2, 7, and some others. Then they directed that hatred they had for God towards me. I wonder why. What have I done to them? But the one demon picked me up, threw me into the wall of this prison cell. Demons have great strength and you have none. I hit the wall of the cell. I collapsed. I felt as if every bone in my body had broken. You know, maybe a spirit doesn't have bones, but it sure felt that way. Then the other demon grabbed yeah, me. You could taste and everything. Right. And uh, the other demon grabbed me, tore my flesh open with its claws. I, I noticed I had a body. Matthew 10, 28 says, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And remember Luke 16, Jesus talked about the rich man in hell. Mm -hmm. He wanted a drop of water to cool his tongue. He could speak. He had eyes to lift. He had a tongue. So you have a body in hell, but it withstands these torments. But something else I had noticed, there was no blood or water coming from the wounds. Mm -hmm. And it was just all dry. But Leviticus 17, 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no life in hell, so there's no blood. And Zechariah 9, 11 says thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. It's not one drop of water in hell. And these demons have no mercy over you whatsoever. They have an extreme hatred for you. But Psalms 103, 17 says the mercy of the Lord is upon those that fear him. Mm. Well, they don't fear him in hell, so you don't derive the benefit of mercy. Now, about this time, Jason, it went dark. Now, I believed it was God's presence there to illuminate it so I could see. But he withdrew his attribute of light, and it resumed its normal state of absolute pitch black darkness. It's just scary, but, it's just scary by itself. Like a oh. darkness so dark, it's just like you even can't go into a, a dark place. You get it's this natural fear. I'm right. sure it's like darker beyond comprehension. You, you can't even see the hand in front of your face. And Lamentations three six says, "He has set me in dark places as they that be dead of old." Jude thirteen mentions blackness of darkness forever. And but you could actually feel this darkness. And Exodus ten twenty one mentions a darkness that may be felt. Sure. I mean, it's so penetrating, you actually feel. Jeez. You know, I looked up this, when I was thinking about it, and talk about darkness, and you talk about um, satanic, demonic powers, and, and how powerful they are. And I just wanted, I wanted to say this about that real quick. Um, when you're dealing with, demonic power we have no power over demons like like nothing like zero but i remember one time i was in bible college and my my um my friend would let me use his uh studio in the college and he would let me use it um uh to go ahead and um you know borrow it during the day but one time i was in there i had this crazy demonic attack and this demon, it was like a bull. It was like a bull, Bill. And it it, it it was a bull, like a bull. And it was so much bigger than me. So when you said they're like 12 feet tall, this thing must have been 10, 10 feet tall. It was, I don't even know. It was, and it was like you couldn't even fit through the door. It was so big, but it was all yeah. muscle. And he came in and he started choking me, okay? Choking me. And I couldn't talk. I couldn't like uh, uh, breathe. It was, I, I would have died. And then... And, and it, that's kind of happened to me before when I was in the world. I didn't know what it was because you couldn't mm -hmm. see it. But this time I'm, I, I could see right. that it's choking me. Well, as it's choking me, I can't do anything. I'm helpless. And then right. what I thought was Jesus. And once I thought it, the, the thing had these big sunken in yellow eyes. And, it, and, and when I said Jesus, I couldn't even say it. I said Jesus like that. He jumped back like somebody shocked mm -hmm. him. And, he, right. and then when I said Jesus again, he just... I could see the fear. He was tr tr like demons tremble Woo, at the mention of his name. And just the next thing, the yeah, just the mention and the power of that name. And then I said, I started screaming, Jesus. And next thing I know this thing run, I run the thing out of the house. And then the door locks behind me. The bell rings for the class. Everyone's coming out. I use my nunchuck skills to break back in. And I'm sitting there panicking like, what just happened? So when you said that about the demons, um, it's real that we have no power, but there's no. power in the name of Jesus. Bill, go on. I want to hear more about your story. When I was placed over next to this large pit of fire, I understood it was about a mile across and it was filled with fire, just flames raging high up in this open cavern. 
you know, but Psalms 11, 6 says, upon the wicked, he will rain fire and brimstone in a horrible tempest. Psalms 140, verse 10, let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits. Matthew 13, 49, many other scriptures about the fire. And this is, Jason, this is where I could first see people. I could see through the fire. It, the light doesn't travel, but I could see through it, and I could literally see thousands of people in this huge inferno burning and screaming. And it's the most horrendous sight to see a person on fire. Now, the people just look like skeletons. It looked like there was no flesh on their bones, just like flesh hanging off their bones. And you could not distinguish a man from a woman. Uh, the screams are so loud and deafening, you want to get away from that, but you have to endure that for all eternity. But Isaiah 57, 21 says, there is no peace, saith my God to the wicked. There's no peace of mind in hell. You hear these screams for all eternity. And, um, you know, many more scriptures about that. But the point was, you know, you want to help someone in this pit of fire burning, but you can't help yourself. Jesus. And, and the heat is way beyond. You can't even imagine why am I still alive in this burning inferno? Um, I understood. Jude, Jude said snatching them from the fire. Right, right. Jude 23, that's exactly right. Some get saved only that way by hearing that there is a burning hell, you know, and, and we get saved by God's goodness, you know, but also, you know, when you understand how severe hell is, you, you know, you how good God to, is. Yeah, you know, you do not want to take a chance and live in sin and uh, reject Jesus Christ or you'll end up in this place. You know, but I understood I was down deep in the earth. I descended to get there. I ascended when I left. But more importantly, there's 49 scriptures that point where the current hell is. Uh, the current hell is called Sheol or Hades. Uh, Sheol, the Hebrew word, Hades, Greek word. But I understood that. And I understood there were different levels of torment and degrees of punishment. But remember, Jesus said in Matthew 23, 14, you shall receive the greater damnation. That infers a lesser damnation. Or Hebrews 10, 28, of how much worse of a punishment Suppose it shall be for you, you who have trodden underfoot the Son of God. There's a worse punishment. But my point is there is no tolerable, comfortable level in hell. Any level is far worse than your mind can even conceive. Now, I wanted to be uh, with people. I wanted to talk to somebody. You know, there's pleasure in being with someone. But in hell, you're kept isolated and all by yourself. Mm. You will never have another conversation again with anyone. You'll be alone and you have no purpose, no destiny. It's just a complete useless wasting away. Ecclesiastes 9.10 says there's no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in Sheol. So let me uh, stop there. Fact, People say, man, I'm living in hell right now. They're having a hard time in life. Yeah. They have not, no idea. They have no idea. They have no idea. Just one of these things would be horrible to experience. Just darkness alone. But like I said, you're alone. I, I thought about my wife up on the earth. Oh, and, man. you know, Pastor Jason, Jesus. I, I, I knew I'll never get to her. And you don't realize what a tormenting thought it is to have no finality with your family. You can't say goodbye. You can't tell them, hey, I still exist. I'm just down deep in the earth. And I love you. and I miss you. and I want to be with you. You can't say any of that. Job 7, 9 says, he that goes down to Sheol shall come up no more. You grasp that. You're not going to get out. And that was really tormenting. You know, death does not mean cease to exist. Death means separation from God. You still exist. You're just down deep in the earth. Yeah, you're living forever. We're, we're right. all eternal beings. You have eternal life right. or eternal death. Exactly. But you're living. Everyone's never going to die. Right. Wow. The stench in hell is the most foul, putrid, disgusting odors. Remember, Jesus rebuked the foul spirits, Mark 9, 25. Demons have a disgust, uh, decaying odor to them but also the smell of burning flesh and the smell of burning sulfur. And if you go to Hawaii to the volcano, they have signs posted where you cannot go past a certain point because the toxicity coming up from the volcano, it will kill you. It's toxic. Well, sulfur is just another word for brimstone. And the word brimstone is mentioned 14 times in the Bible. So you're breathing in this foul, putrid, disgusting air that you don't want to breathe. But it's even worse than that. Pastor Jason, you don't get enough air to breathe. You have to fight for even the tiniest bit of oxygen. And I just demonstrate to you, this is how you breathe in hell. It was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> that was as much air as you could get. Well, any moment you feel like you're going to suffocate. But see, Isaiah 42, 5 says, the Lord gives breath to the people upon the earth. Jesus. You're not upon the earth. You're down deep beneath the earth. God is very specific with his word. 
Um, and you need to sleep in hell. You never get to go to sleep in hell. You know, here we need sleep, right? If you stay up for two nights, you're pretty much, you can't function after two days. Well, in hell, you need to sleep also, but you never get to rest. But see, Revelation 14, 10 and 11 says, and they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb and in the presence of the holy angels and the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night. Okay, Bill, we got, we got, we got to, okay, I'm going to ask the people, make sure you're sending your questions in guys, because I know you're getting questions. Um, Jesus, just send your questions in YouTube, Instagram, or, or email, send your questions in. I, we could, we may be able to get to one or two of them right now. Again, thank you Jaffa for partnering. But again, uh, send your questions right now so we can, we can get them. We can maybe we got Bill right now live so we can get maybe one or two of these answers. So let's go right back. Go ahead, okay. Bill. Um, I was standing next to this pit of fire and I was standing beneath a tunnel ascending upward and all along the cavern walls were demons. Some were only two and three feet tall, some 12 and 13 feet, but there were snakes and I was standing on a solid bed of maggots. You remember Jesus said where so there some were... Some of them were two, three feet. Right. Some of them... Yeah, wow. Feet tall, all different. And then you said there's like creatures, like rats, like big rats. Right, demons that look like rats, like look like, look like spiders, uh, twisted, deformed, and grotesque. All everything is deformed and just hideous. Um, and like I said, maggots were crawling all over everything. But Isaiah fourteen eleven says, "Where the maggot will spread, be spread under thee, and the worm will cover thee." Look it up in the original. It's the word maggot. And, you know, I never knew this, but when a dead animal is being eaten by maggots, after the maggots consume the flesh, maggots die. But that's why Jesus said, where their worm dies not, and he used the word maggot, because the flesh is never fully consumed in hell. So as Job 24, 20 says, the maggot will feed sweetly on thee. Is that disgusting enough? You're hungry. You never get to eat in hell. The, um, thirst. Remember, the rich man wanted one drop of water. You know, if I was to give you one drop, that wouldn't suffice, would it? No. You wouldn't value one drop. But in hell you would. You would do anything for that one drop that you'll never get. And then one more thing I want to share with you. The fear level in hell is so far beyond anything you can imagine. And I know something about fear. Uh, when I was 17, I, w I was surfing and a tiger oh, shot. Oh, that's a crazy wrapped story. Wrapped my leg. You know, it ripped the leg off of the guy next to me, blood all over the water. The shark came back, bit my board in half, grabbed my leg and pulled me down under the water. And it was a tiger shark. If you know anything about tiger sharks, yeah. they're vicious, they won't let you go. And this was in uh, Cocoa Beach, Florida. And um, so you can imagine the fear that I felt at that moment that I went down when the shark yeah. pulled me. You know, you haven't been through it. You can at least imagine it. Well, that fear that I felt paled in comparison to what you feel in hell. It wouldn't even register in hell. But see, Psalm 73, 18 and 19 says, you cast them down into destruction where they are utterly consumed with terror. You're consumed with this terror for all eternity. You know, but one good thing I want to tell you, uh, that shark not only opened his mouth and let me go, but I didn't have a mark in my leg. Now, that's impossible. But, you know, God was looking out for me then. Yeah. And I was, I was not even a Christian then. No. But I got saved immediately after that. So, so. wow, I I've, heard, I've heard this that testimony several times, and your my spirit bears witness. It's it, obviously the word. It's the word of God. Everything you're saying is backed by the word of God. I I know I've heard you say this many times. Like, don't believe me, believe right. the word of God, and exactly. that's why it's so powerful. Because, and then people can get the book and everything like that, and get more of the story. Right. Um, I believe it's right behind you there. Um, all those books, I have them all. Yeah, I, I have all of them. But because of the scripture, because of the scripture, the scripture. Yeah. Now, I guess we're going to have to do this again um, next right. next week. Uh, we only have eight minutes, so we want to bring a little bit of good news, and then yes. we'll go back into talking about heaven and hell. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Something's on your heart. Just share this part. This was the good part. You know, when I was in this tunnel, something began raising me up this dark tunnel, and suddenly this bright light appeared. Now, there was no question in my mind who it was. I didn't see his face. I just saw the outline of a man standing in a white, pure, holy light. Oh and I called out his name. I said, Jesus. And he just said two words. He said, I am. And when he said that, I went out. I can explain that through Revelation 1.16. When John saw him, he said his countenance was bright as the sun, and I fell at his feet as one dead. Well, I was at his feet, 
And there is where it hit me so strong, even though I've been a Christian at that time for 28 years. If he wouldn't have gone to the cross, I would be in that place for all eternity. I was so grateful for what Jesus did for me. I didn't want to ask him any questions. I just wanted to worship him and thank him. But after a time, he started answering my thoughts. I had thoughts and I had eight different thoughts. He answered them all. But just to share a couple with him quickly, I thought, Lord, those demons, why they hate me so much? He goes, because you're made in my image and they hate me. John 15, 18, Jesus said they hated me before they hate you. I said, Lord, I don't want to tell anybody about this experience. They're going to think I'm crazy or had a bad dream. He said, it's not your job to convict their hearts. It's the Holy Spirit's. You just go and tell them. Now, uh, I didn't want to tell anybody about my experience. Sure, I want to witness you're like, everybody. Like the stories I've had, you don't want to tell nobody because you're like, people are going to think I'm crazy. But right. You right. have to tell it because if you don't, kind of like you, the blood's on your hands. That's like a real well, thing. I told it to I told it to my best friend. It spread from there all around the country. Uh, we began getting invited to churches for, for the next seven years. We paid our own way. We never took one penny from anybody for seven years. Then the publisher asked me to write the book. So it's not something I wanted to self-promote. But I put in there, there's over 150 verses about hell. Jesus talked about hell in 46 verses. So that's the important thing for people to check it out. you know. And uh, But uh, the last thing I want to share was God allowed me to feel peace of his heart. We went above the earth and were uh, in this whirlwind tunnel that we came out of hell and people were falling one after another, after another down in the hell. And uh, he let me feel just a piece of the anguish he feels for a soul falling into hell. You know, Ephesians 3.19 said his love passes knowledge. I couldn't even stand to feel a little bit of the love God has for people, how much he loves everyone and he doesn't want them to go to hell. And that's why he's entrusted us as Christians with the gospel so we can share it with people so they won't have to go there. And uh, that now was the most. Now you're getting me fired up because. That, well, that th this was the thing that touched me the most was uh, just a little bit of God's heart, how much he loves people. He doesn't want to see people go there. You know, he died a horrible death to keep them out, you know, you, you and, know, uh, you know, Bill, when the Lord called me to start a church, I didn't want a pastor. I think I was afraid of it. And then when I got touched when I heard the cry of the, I heard the cry of the people. Right. And it got in my heart. Yes. And it, cha it changed my life. Like it changed my life. Like I, I, I can't do anything else. I, I'll, right. never be, I'll never be able to do anything else. Me neither. When I saw all those people falling one after That's another back down. That's the love of God. That's the compassion. Right. I mean, he has great compassion for people. Um, and he's, like I said, entrusted us with the precious words that will save someone's life for eternity. You know, one last thing to tell you, the worst part of hell is understanding you'll never get out. You know, Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. They have no hope for him because it's too late. And we know Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. He's the only truth. He's the only way to stay out of hell is by repenting of our sins and receiving Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But the good news is nobody has to go there. They That's just need news. to repent. And turn to turn away from a sinful lifestyle and agree to follow Jesus. And what and about this? What about this? You know, when I got saved, I, I struggled for years with areas, mm -hmm. Bill. Because, you know, I had come out of that world and I struggled for years. Right. But yeah. if I was to die in that condition, I, I, I believe I'd still go to heaven in my struggle. Because God yeah. saved me. I, it was merciful. Right. So we don't want people having a hell conscience. Like, it, this is more about evangelism and right. living right for God. And yeah. evangelism, like if you believe in your heart that God raised them from the dead, mm -hmm. you shall be saved. That's right. Talk about that. Because I know you're not trying to put the like a, no. a, a hell mentality, but if people don't listen, it, the, the message, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes right. by hearing. So when we, we don't, we preach heaven, faith for heaven. You preach healing, faith for healing. You preach finance, faith for finance. You preach hell, faith for soul winning. Right. And an attitude of gratitude and the fear of the Lord. Exactly. You know, Revelation 2015 says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. God has a book and he's going to look to see if our names are in his book. And you can have your name. You can have your name in his book. Yeah, and, but you need to be certain of this one. You can't mess around with this. And, uh, you know, Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless a man repent, you shall all likewise perish. And again, repent means to turn away from sin and agree to turn and follow Jesus. 
you know, and Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God's raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. You have to believe it in your own heart and confess him with your own mouth to be saved. And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes unto the father, but by me. You Man, know, he's Bill, the only way. He's the only way to stay out of hell. Bill, we have two minutes left. Okay. And I don't know if it's somebody's watching now or somebody's going to watch in 20 years from now. But we cannot end this broadcast without giving somebody the opportunity. Yes. No matter what lifestyle they're in. Yeah. I don't care okay. if they're in drugs. I don't care if they're in prison. I don't care if they murdered. doesn't matter. Right. God's grace is sufficient. I need you yes. to pray for somebody right now that right. says, I want to, I want, I want to come in. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life. Bill, would you, right. would you pray? Yes. Right now, I ask you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, just touch these people's hearts. If that's you and you're willing to turn you away from a sinful lifestyle, then say this prayer. Say, dear God in heaven, dear God in I know heaven. that I've sinned and I cannot save myself. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me, Jesus. that he was crucified, died and was buried, but rose again and lives forevermore. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. I repent. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for taking me to heaven. And I now confess I'm a born-again Christian born again. going to heaven going to in heaven. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Bill, we didn't have time to answer questions. It's too many. It's like, it's it's that was 30 minutes. Uh, it goes by we might fast. have to do three shows, man. I don't know. This is crazy. Because I know you haven't told hardly any of your story, and I because I've heard it a million times. I didn't realize it was going to go this fast. I knew it was going to go fast, not this fast. I know. I love you, Bill. I'm I'm praying for you. I know um, I, this message is probably going to be persecuted, and it has been because people misunderstand. But mm -hmm. I, I tell you, brother, you keep going. We we love you. We support you, and well, you're an evangelist, and and millions are coming to Christ uh, uh, because of this testimony. Um, and so I love you and I love your well, wife and I'll, and I'll see you next week. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate being on just people have to get to know Jesus Christ and they don't have to go to this horrible place. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well guys, today's podcast, you know, like Mickey mouse, now it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much for all your prayers, all your support. Um, we're going to have Bill back next week. Uh, share this with somebody, share the link. It'll be up on YouTube now and just share it with somebody you know it's coming it's easter weekend man bring somebody to church whether you're in massachusetts indiana australia or you're local get somebody to the house of god this easter people our hearts are open to come to christ because this is what it's all about um you know the name our names written in the book of life and uh man i heard another testimony about a great minister and he was saying um that when he, he, people were coming up to the throne and, 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 and some people, God was saying, let them in. Others, they couldn't get in. And we don't want to be numbered among those that don't get in. We're going to be numbered among those who do get in. And we're going to believe for our friends and our family and our loved ones to come to Christ. Again, um, do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, click that like button. Make a comment. Uh, subscribe for this YouTube channel. Get all the latest updates. Also, go on the website. You want to become a partner. We have gifts for you, partners. This is for you this month. Uh, we're going to be breaking all this down, why he came. And this is all talking about the same subject. I mean, this is it. We're here. We're in it. And if you gave your life to Jesus Christ today, uh, you also reach out to us. I want to bless you. Uh, if you gave your life to Jesus, I want to bless you with a book. Um, so just, uh, it's a free, but if you've given your life to Jesus today, it's my gift to you. Um, get to a church. It could be Freedom Church here in Whittier or any church that you find yourself that the Lord leads you. But get to church, serve God. Do your best and win people to Jesus Christ. I love you. And again, what a, what a, I'm, I'm like trembling up here. Uh, again, that Pharaoh, his time is up. It's time to let my people go. I love you. Bye bye.